Welcome to Loving Beyond the I Do Podcast. This power couple is building stronger marriages one day at a time. Talking about real issues on love, relationships, and marriage longevity. Let's break down the barriers and engage in healthy conversation with your hosts, Jason and Tina Marie. Take a seat and buckle up because things are about to get real. Hey, 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 welcome to the show. Welcome to another episode of Love and Beyond the I Do. With your hosts, Jason and Tina Marie. And this week we have with us Dr. Marissa Pay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. We are glad to have you. Yes, we are. So, we, as you know, our show talks about relationships. And we understand that, Dr. Marissa, you talk about relationships in terms of happiness. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> so so what, do you, what do you mean by happiness? What exactly is happiness to you? When, you, when you're talking about happiness? And do you look at it from a perspective of as a couple or from an individual standpoint? All of the above. Okay. Happiness is our birthright. And uh, to be happy 88% of the time, to be exact, not 100% of the time. If you're 100% happy, you're dead. <laughs> we don't want dead people walking around, just 88%. And why 88 instead of 99 uh, if you're looking at the camera now, I know you thought I was Swedish, but I'm actually Chinese. <laughs> and eight is a lucky number in Chinese. It's a homonym for good fortune. So double eight is our good fortune. It is our birthright to be happy 88% of the time. And that's been my mission. So happiness is an inside out job. And when you have that inside out job done or in process, the likelihood of having a happy relationship goes up magnificently. And if you're not happy with yourself and you're looking for someone to complete your unhappiness, then that relationship is most likely going to default to the lower common denominator of unhappiness. So I think that we are sort of misled by Snow White and Cinderella. Absolutely. And it, to to believe and Jerry Maguire <laughs> that uh, it's it's it is it is a you know two halves coming together. There's one soulmate, and if you don't find that person, or if you've had them and they die or leave you and betray you, that you can no longer be happy again. And that's BS. That's a belief system that keeps us from being happy. Eighty eight percent. I know Jason and I, we talk about all the time um, in, in regards to marriage. We always hear the fairy tale, right? You grow up, yep. you get married, and then there's happily ever after. And we know that happiness, as you said, is within. And we also talk about that um, you shouldn't look for someone to complete you. You look for someone to complement you. That's the difference. When we're looking for someone to complete us, that indicates that we're not whole and complete by ourselves. So therefore, when we're look when we have happiness from within and we're looking to complement that happiness with more happiness, then we have to look at the situation as I'm not looking for an individual to complete me. I'm looking for someone to compliment me, someone who's going to multiply yes. what I already have and not take away from it. So what do you think about that, Jason? Yeah, part of the problem is we get someone that does not necessarily make us happy totally just for the moment, just for one little small aspect of our lives, and that becomes a problem. It has to be full circle. You have to be happy in all aspects of your life. And like Tina said, if they don't, multiply your relationship or your life and it may not be the right person for you i know when we first started this whole endeavor i was telling i was saying at this point in, in my life right we're we're past the 20s the 30s and we're up there at this point in my life i just want to be happy you know and people say well what do you mean i mean that um it's a choice yeah. it's a choice so in in saying it's a choice how do you think people can make that choice for themselves instead of looking for other people to make them happy? You have to start with you. If you can't say that you're happy with yourself 80% of the time, if you don't like yourself 80% of the time, if you don't approve of yourself 80% of the time, how do you 
expect anyone else to. And then there's a misconception about how people really are. So I have a thing called the pregnancy model of relationships that I talk about in chapter four of my number one bestselling book, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are. And it's out of heartbreak back into love. Because we have these misconceptions or BS belief systems about relationships and, and the, the completer or, you know, how so it's up to someone else to make us happy, dating becomes this incredibly misleading effort because as uh, one of my guests, Don Miguel Ruiz, um, who wrote The Four Agreements and also the, my book on relationships called The Mastery of Love, when you're out dating, you're showing your best side of your fruit. You're in a marketplace. Right. You don't see the rotten side. You see the, <laughs> the very beautiful, glowing, you know, and that's the first trimester in any relationship. We talk for hours. <laughs> oh, my good life. And, and then you make promises that you can't keep in those first three months because you don't even know the person. Right. But because you buy into this BS, then you get disappointed. The second trimester is when the glow's over and you see, you turn the fruit and you see the fullness, yourself included, of who you are and who they are. And so all of that angst of, oh, they didn't keep their promise and they did, used to do this and you don't bring me flowers anymore, <laughs> that is just you know, normal part of a relationship. It's the reality side. The third trimester is when the buck stops. It's your choice, just like happiness. It's your choice whether you want to enter into another lease extension for this relationship. <laughs> and if you don't, if you not, if you're not 80% happy with that person, then let them go. Not because you deserve to have someone great. It's not because of that at all. Get over yourself. If you're with someone and you don't like them 80% of the time, can you imagine how miserable they are? Yep. That they yep. have to be with you who don't value them. So is that Let sort of like go. is that sort of like when we say you shouldn't settle? So is that would that be on the same lines as settling, right? So you're not happy, but you're in this relationship. Because you need a relationship to be in. Right. Right. But it's it's taking the onus off of our selfish, what I want, and I'm not going to settle, and I don't want to. But most of the time, we choose that. There's another uh, part in the book says, if you want a dog, don't buy a cat. <laughs> You know, we choose, if you know you hate smoking, you're adventurous, you love to travel, then don't pick a person who has the occasional cigarette and is a couch potato and just wants to stay home and watch movies. Right. Don't think that you can make them into Something. what you want. Make that, make that dog, that cat into a dog. Exactly. You can't do it. <laughs> but, then, but then that's what we do. We, we pick this fruit we pick the cat and then say, well, I just, you know, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he could be better. He has so much potential. And it's like, again, you know, this is not about settling. This is about fixing your own picker. You have the responsibility to know yourself, to know what you like. And there's so many people that can meet that list of what you think you need. And here's the big million dollar question. Are you a match to what you want? Absolutely. That's the question right You there. don't want criticizers. How much do you complain? Exactly. exactly. You complain a lot. You know, join my 21-day fast from complaining. Without <laughs> that's the dare, 21 consecutive days without complaining. Because that's the whole, you know, relationships, they're not hard. But we make them hard. You know, that's funny. The BS that we carry around, the belief systems that we've either learned from our can't, you know, they didn't go to relationship schools. My parents didn't know what to do. They didn't have coaches. They didn't have right now. We're in a place that if you if you don't know how to have a good relationship, you have not been tuning into all of the free stuff that's out there. 
So right, you have to wow. self educate. That's, that's amazing because um, we also had a, quite a few of of young people on, like thirty and younger, and all of them. Even now, when I talk to young people, they say, "Well, well." relationships are complicated. complicated and I'm like, what's so complicated about it? It's the individual. What are you bringing to the table? That's mucking up the relationship. Whereas you don't realize that it can be just as smooth as anyone else's relationship. And it's funny that you said that, you know, buying into this BS relationship or, you know, what we think a relationship is. I think that's probably most of it is that, um, they make it complicated because they're looking at these fairy tales. They're looking at yeah. social media. Social they're looking media. outside yeah. of themselves for what they think a relationship is instead of just tuning into what makes them happy, right? Am I bringing to the table what I want someone else to have? I think social media has done it for a lot of young people anyway. I mean, they're looking at these photos and they're saying, I want that relationship. Well, that relationship isn't that relationship. It's just a captured at that particular time and moment that they actually want to portray and send out to the rest of the world. But if you, mm -hmm. you know, you, you dig down onto that relationship, you find out neither one of them are happy in that relationship. And it really doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> who cares? That's why. <laughs> right. Who cares who's with who? Who cares if they're having a good relationship? Who cares Absolutely. if they're breaking up? Who cares? Does it really make a forking difference in your life experience that has so much possibility? Why? It's not the media. You know, I, I media, your media, we get blamed all the time. People have forgotten that their number one most powerful tool in life is attention, their own attention. We've abdicated our attention. Right. Well, you know, this is happening. It's like, sweetheart, no one put a gun to your head to start doing this in the morning. Nobody put a gun to your head to <laughs> exactly. do this. Nobody put a gun to your head to turn the TV, radio, podcast, whatever it is. If you start your morning like this, you're not going to have a good relationship with yourself. I promise. Absolutely. If you start your morning sitting up and just connecting with life with a capital L, having eat, taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich, which is eight specific gratitudes in the morning and eight specific appreciations at night about yourself – you're going to have a good relationship starting with yourself and then with most of the people around you. And don't pick the people that it's hard to have a relationship with. <laughs> Go where the forking love is. Why is it that we're attracted to people who are pains in the assets? I don't understand that. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. And then you spend the rest of your time complaining about them. It's like you have everybody has at least two people in their lives who want to be with them, who appreciate them. So quit chasing after the six ones who don't return your text or your call and you complain about them every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but so, you really want to be with that person. So what are we doing? For, so what are we doing in terms of happiness? Give us some of your tools and techniques for um, happiness and not only in relationships, but with, re with the relationship with yourself. Starting mm -hmm. with yourself, because if you don't have that foundation of a good relationship with you, how yeah. do you expect it to have it with someone else? So give us some of your secret recipes. So I just gave you the gratitude sandwich, which All is right. a really good foundation. The other one is, so I have a friend. Again. So your gratitude sandwich is eight, eight good gratitude bites in the morning. So Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's on the other side, one of my teachers, um, who says five gratitudes every morning. So I'm an overachiever <laughs> and Chinese and you know about the lucky number eight. So I say eight. The rules are you cannot say friends and family too general. So eight specific things that you are grateful for first thing in the morning. One always is the taste of my coffee. I love the taste of my coffee. I love the feeling of my my comforter uh, around my body. I love the view of the ocean that I have. I love um, my two beautiful inside and out daughters who are in Northern California, who just gave me the most amazing Mother's Day. I'm grateful that I my message and my shtick makes me feel good when I talk about it. I'm grateful that I'm funny, even though my husband says said that I wasn't. And I'm grateful <laughs> that um, there's technology during this time where we can't get together. And I'm grateful that we're, 
you know, we're almost through this thing, that the light at the end of the tunnel is not that of an oncoming train. So that took less than two minutes. That probably took like 44 seconds yep. because that's my discipline. Hashtag discipline. I get that from my big brother, Michael Bernard Beckwith. So I have this as a muscle workout every morning. When I start that way, I cannot be pissed off first thing in the morning. If I read this, I'm going to be pissed off. Right, right. We well, scroll through right, that phone. Right, that's exactly it. Right. Yes. Exactly. So I actually plug my phone in a different room because sometimes I can't trust myself. So <laughs> <laughs> then at the end of the day, mm -hmm. And this is the most important thing, and I'll combine it with another uh, tool, Happy 88 tool, which is my friend, she doesn't have an answering machine. She has a questioning machine. And when you call her, it says, who are you? And <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> so that tool is so important. And what the pandemic hashtag COVID silver lining has been is the pause in allowing us take a breath with me right now take a breath in through your nose and release through the mouth ah soft shoulders soft elbows soft knees another deep breath in and releasing all the stories and the drama and one yes. last breath in connecting with me through chi eternal energy the breath of life that connects us all so that tool right there took another 44 seconds, but don't you feel in the moment yes. good, yes. right? Yes. Right. So here's another tool. Now, the, the, the third tool it, that's a part of the answering machine or the questioning machine is after you take that breath, the question is, who am I? At the core of who I am, I am more than a mom. Absolutely. I'm more than a, a, a podcaster. I'm more than a consultant. I'm more than a speaker. I'm more than this. I'm more than that. At the core of who I am, I that doesn't change. So I have this new term called unconditional happiness. It does not have your happiness does not reflect the conditions that you are in. Absolutely. Because you can be happy even in a pandemic. You can be happy even in a divorce. You can be happy even in a bad relationship. You can be happy even in, even in, even in. So that workout though requires a, 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 a constant turning. Who am I in this exact moment? Well, this shift just happened. I don't like it. But does that really change who I really am? Am I still loving most of the time? Yes. Am I still caring most of the time? Yes. Am I still creative and innovative 80% of the time? Absolutely. Am I still worthy 80% of the time? Absolutely. So all of these things, if I can connect with that, I cannot have a bad day. I cannot be unhappy because in a moment by moment basis, I'm asking myself, I'm not the thoughts that run my head. I'm not the critic in my head. I can say, is this thought that I'm having, is this experience that I'm having make me feel good or not? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't make me feel good, walk away. Drop the rock. Drop the rope. You cannot have a tug of war if you do not pick up that side of the rope. All right. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's shift the conversation a little bit. So I did notice you said husband. So, yes. <laughs> so explain to us what is a husband. A husband is someone that was your husband. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's exactly what I thought it was, okay? Yes. And so tell us about what you learned early in marriage as far as your relationship, during the middle of your marriage and towards the end of your marriage, and now into the phase of where he's a husband. And just mm -hmm. in terms of relationship. Yeah, sure. So I am one of the seven out of ten of us who had childhood trauma. Okay. So we are the majority, and it's very common for children of trauma to choose a mate who helps them feel as unworthy as they did growing up. Okay. So I grew up being beaten and told I was fat, ugly, and clumsy. That's my story. Fox uh, DC had me on as a woman's history month highlight. And I talked about, you know, those messages that I got from a well-meaning, some more mean than well mom 
who really thought as a Chinese uh, uh, tiger mom on steroids that telling you you were fat, ugly, and clumsy was a motivator to not be fat, ugly, and clumsy. So that was her. She did the best that she could. I talked to her every day. You know, that's the chapter on out of hatred into forgiveness. That's both for my mom and my husband. But (laughs) the the whole, um, you know, choosing someone, he used to introduce me to his uh, friends behind my back as being obese. And I was thinner than I am now. But see, I chose that. I, I was so broken. He was broken too. So we were two broken people coming together, trying to fix each other. I was going to fix him. He was going to um, try to see himself as good as his mom did, but he never did. So that was the coming together. And I tried to leave six times. So I thank God he had an affair. If he had not had an affair, I would have not had the ability to leave. So that was the story of a, a, a people ask me, how long were you married? My sentence was 9.2 years, but <laughs> it was, would I, would I, would I do anything differently? Would I, do I, re, I have no regrets. That's the motto for my past is no regrets for my future is don't die wondering. I have two beautiful children that could not have come except through us. And so everything that I learned through that marriage one was truly how to love myself because I'll never forget that defining moment of coming back. I picked a man who didn't like to work, which is why I lost almost uh, multiple millions in the divorce. It was expensive. Why is divorce so expensive? Because it's worth it. But <laughs> you know, chapter five out of hatred and forgiveness. So um, I remember coming home, long day at work, traveling. I used to work like 80 hours a week. I, I'm a, a recovering um, overachiever, but uh, just a little I bit of recovery. Back. Still an overachiever, yeah, just yeah, a little yeah. bit of recovery. It's not, a light <laughs> it's not a light switch. So I walked into the the TV room where he was watching TV, and he didn't even look up. I mean, I have been gone for a week. He didn't even look up. No, how are you? How was the trip? You know, let me get you something. Nothing, right? Oh, right. So I went stomping upstairs. <laughs> dove under the covers <laughs> one more time he, why doesn't he pay attention to me why doesn't he value me why doesn't he respect me why doesn't he listen to me why doesn't he understand why doesn't he... and then all of a sudden <laughs> the clouds parted light shone down a voice came down and said do you listen to yourself? Do you respect mm. yourself? Do you value your opinion? Do you see who you really are? Right. And I'm like, oh, fork. That was, I was like, oh, my God, literally. Oh, my God. And from that, that was the turning point. You know, people ask all the time, you know, at what point did you realize that what you were doing was not working? <laughs> that was the defining moment. And, and from that point on, it was, you know, people give such a bad rap to selfishness. Selfishness is a beautiful thing. We've been co-opted into this codependent BS belief system that we have to die to make other people happy. That is so far from the truth. That is so against what we are here for. This Mm -hmm. is joy ride of life. And if you're not having joy 88% of the time, please stop, get off the ride and take a look at what you're doing. So that point is when I said, I, 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 you know, he's not the problem. You're the problem. Right. Right. And when I got to the healthy place of, okay, I'm, I have now shifted who I am right. and I can see myself for who I am. I'm not a piece of shiitake. I, I married him with the intent of, you know, he was really good looking that I thought I could rise in the esteem right. of his eyes and my eyes 
by having that relationship. As we said, that that completing, looking for someone to complete you, looking for of someone course. to bring you up and give you that esteem or love inside that you were that you yes. wanted. Right. Yes. Now what exactly. happened after you had that realization and coming to yourself, how long did it take before you actually were able to stand on stand on your own two feet and walk away from the relationship? Or feel uh, confident enough in yourself? Because just because, yeah. you know, uh, an awakening moment. awakening moment happened and, you know, you had this voice speak to you, that means yeah. it happened it's overnight. Right. No, it's not a light switch. So, you know, people say, you know, how far do you have to go down before you realize? It's when you stop digging. When you're, you know, when you're just tired of being tired yeah. and you're fed yeah. up with the way things are going and everybody's personal around that. And you really can't do anything with people who are not at that point. Right. You right. cannot pour into a closed cup. Right. It's yeah. possible. So again, who cares? You know, I, it's not, if you come to me and ask me for help, I will give you help, but I don't pour where I'm not being received. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. So same with the relationship. I say this to my kids all the time. This, this, you know, you do this, and if the person does this, you got a match. If you do this and they do this, you don't have a match, right? right. Then it's on to the next, the next chapter in your book of romance. That's another BS. There's only one person. He's my soul, man. I'm looking for myself. <laughs> there are so many people on the planet that you can have a good relationship with. The question is, are you having a good relationship 80% of the time? I have couples come to me for coaching and I ask them that question and they'll say, yes, 80% of the time I, you know, he's great. She's great. But, and then they'll go into the 20% and they'll spend 45 minutes on that. And I'm like, sweetheart, that's not 20%. Right. That's, yeah. that's not the great that, that you started that's, with. That's 80%. So either you quit focusing on that and truly make it the 20% that it is or on to the next chapter in your book of romance, because you're driving them crazy. You say that they're enough, but then you don't act like they're enough. So that journey that you began on, how did it start? What was the first book that you, that, or the first thing when you realized that you, that the issue lied with you and not with him, what was the first step you took or book or read or seminar? What was the first thing you did to realize that I need to change and love myself? I, I went to the library and literally a book fell out, out of the, the, the bookshelf. Don't like it literally jumped out and fell on the floor. I picked it up as women who love too much. So that was the first one. The second one was codependent no more. And my beloved friend, Melody Beattie, who was one of the first guests on my own show, uh, 471 consecutive weeks later, right. uh, she wrote Codependent No More, and that was also very instrumental. Don Miguel Ruiz's book, The Mastery of Love, was very important. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, it, I can't, I can't just limit it to all that. I mean, it's just a literal, you know, daily, uh, beautiful unfolding yes, of yes. Yes. Yeah. It, it the latest one, yeah the latest one is you know people go all the time you know you should you, you should i hate when people shit on me uh, <laughs> you know have another relationship get married are you gonna get married again and it's like sweetheart i am so happy with who i am right. and comfortable with who i am i'm not saying that i won't but until there's someone that crosses my path that treats me better than I treat myself, <laughs> why bother? You know? Right. And, and that's the key. Caffeinated coffee. Why bother? You know? <laughs> I'm truly so satisfied and I love my life more than 88%. Why would I voluntarily put myself in a compromise position? Just Compromise is of, not yes. in my vocabulary. Don't like the word never have. Collaborate, fine. But even then, I take that with small doses. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you've gotten to a point where you really 
done a lot of self work and you truly love yourself. You truly love your life. So yes. yeah, for you to find someone now, they're going to really have to be on their A game when they Yes. Can. Yes. So Fran Drescher was on my show and I, and I asked her, you know, what her qualifications were cuz she had just at that point the first time I interviewed her, she uh, her husband turned out came out of the closet. Mm -hmm. So, so I asked her, you know, are you interested in, she, yeah, she dates and what are her qualifications? She said the five S's. Let's see if I can remember this. <laughs> so, um, sexy, smart, successful, single and strict. <laughs> so, I'm going to adopt that. Well, you know, well, she thought she had those first five the first time, right? It wasn't until he yeah, got the closet. Yeah. Right. Well, no, she added the fifth one. After right. That. right. 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 So, so that's, and, 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 you know, if someone's watching and, and you are comfortable, the last guy I dated said, you know, I can be okay with being third on your list after your job and your kids or your career and your kids, but coming in 10th is just not <laughs> me. And I respect him for that. And right. so I don't think I would want someone who was happy with being 10th. But this is the thing. I'm a strong woman. No shiitake. I know what I want. I'm, I'm very, I can, I'm very shy as you can tell. Um, sarcasm is another service that I offer. So I, I, you know, I, I, I'm happy to um, entertain the possibility, but yes, definitely a game. But the problem is, I had Dr. Pat Allen on uh, every year on Valentine's and she just shakes her head at me because in her mind, I, I, the only hope for me, unless I squish down my masculine energy and just come with my feminine energy, no pun intended there. Um, then I'm, I'm screwed. No pun intended there. <laughs> That was good. Yeah. That was good. Um, because, you know, I, I don't want someone who is not strong, but by just by strength and strength alone, you, it's so much work. I'm not saying I couldn't make it work mm -hmm. or they could. Well, work. what do you think? So what do you think about? So one of my things is that as strong women, right, we have to be able to find the balance in being strong when we need to be strong, but also um, taking a backseat when we need to and understanding uh, letting a man be a man or, as you said, putting down your masculinity, right? Sometimes it's okay to, you know, take that off for the night and just be a woman instead mm -hmm. of trying to be or, or trying to have to be a strong woman. So what do you yeah. think in that? So not that we have to choose, right? We don't have to choose between the two. We can actually be both, but be them when we choose to be them. But it is confusing for the man. When we're both, yeah. because I for you uh, for me no because you know when it's time for me to step up I go ahead and step up regardless <laughs> of who you are <laughs> so I, I, I don't have a problem but listen right. it's better to, to me to have a strong woman than a meek one because sometimes when it's time to make a decision and I'm wishy washy on some things Tina jumps in and goes no you know what we need to do this and I'm like you know what I do then let's go ahead and do this not should I don't should on them. No, you don't shit on me. You said, we need to do this. <laughs> or we're going to do this. Need, or we're going need, to do this, yes. You, you need him instead of you. <laughs> so that's what your husband meant, huh? Your, was it your yeah. sarcasm or your sense of humor that he said it wasn't funny? <laughs> every day, he told me every single day that I was not funny. Yeah. And, and I would come off stages of 5,000 people laughing their assets off. And I would tell him, you know, they're all laughing. And he would say, ah, oh, they're just trying to make you feel good or they don't have a sense of humor. So the best part of divorce <laughs> is owning my funny. I'm funny. <laughs> I am funny. I'm sorry. Y'all been laughing yes. almost this whole time. Absolutely. Laughter is wonderful. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Laughter you is my favorite sound on the planet. And you are funny. Now, are none. So Burn now up. you can tell your husband that Tina Marie said that you are funny. <laughs> <laughs> and don't disagree with her. <laughs> right, right. Because he, he said all those 5,000 people didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah. Oh, they knew exactly. something. Uh, one thing I want to say, um, 
you, you said like in the first trimester how people are all lovey dovey and throwing everything at it just to make this relationship work. One thing that you said, and when you were meet, you had met someone, and he said he was number tenth on your list, right? That's not just going all in. You have a place. You have to either work to come up to number one or number two or whatever. But I'm not just going to automatically put you at the top of my list. And that's where a lot of people mess up in that first trimester. They see some faults and all that other stuff, but then they still say, I'm going to put everything into this person and then get disappointed. So mm-hmm. how's your first trimester? When you start, when you begin today, what does your first trimester look like? I was going to answer his question. Oh, okay, go ahead. No, 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 I, I mean, I didn't know if that was, because that sounds like two different things. Okay, right? go okay, go ahead, go ahead and take my yeah, okay. You're both confusing me. <laughs> no. Um, so, 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 you know, it's really, honestly, uh, when I did that interview at, uh, on Valentine's for, for the TV station on relationships, the, the question was, do relationships have to be that hard? So if someone has to work that hard in the first trimester, mm. when things are supposed to be easy, yep. <laughs> if it ain't easy in the first trimester, that's a, that's a sign right there. You shouldn't have to work that hard. I agree. Yes. In the first trimester to make your, you know, position there. If he's not in that position, it's not on him. It's on me. I haven't made that him a priority mm-hmm. uh, uh, because I didn't, you know, he's a nice guy and he's, you know, but, but I, I he didn't, uh, he didn't make it up that far. Right? right. So that that's just not a match. It doesn't, he's not bad and I'm not bad. What would life be like if everybody looked at the, the model of relationships as that, as the, those three trimesters. And when things didn't work out on the second trimester and you make the decision in the third, not to continue, if you didn't blame the other person for not being good enough, mm. that's why settling that word triggers me is because it's not about settling. It's just not a match. Right. It's not a match. It's not a match. You're not bad right. or wrong. right. I'm not bad or wrong for it. It just wasn't a match. Nice to meet you. We're just not a match, right? If it's that difficult first trimester, you're just not a match. Because baby, second trimester test really. If you if you have a, it's like getting a graduate degree, honey. You better really want that. (laughs) (laughs) There's so many reasons to drop out, right? Mm. Same thing. with everything, right? You got to really want it. So, so if it's hard right away, like in the first three dates, if you're already starting to get annoyed, whew, save yourself some time, boo. Love ya. See you in the next that's life. Right, that's right. Yeah. You're, you know, a match, that's you're a match for someone else. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm releasing you into the glory of another better match relationship. That's and, it. And that's a guess what? That's a good way to look at it. It's just not a match. It's not a failed relationship. Things didn't work out. It's just not a good match. Divorce is not a failed relationship. Divorce divorce is not a bad word. Divorce is a beautiful freedom from something that wasn't working. That's all. You know, it doesn't have to be cantankerous or, uh, I mean, it it almost is because everybody takes it personally. And mine was very personal. I had glue on my car. He put up a Asian woman seeking Asian or Caucasian woman disillusion with marriage all over the little town. <laughs> he found it on Craigslist and it was bad. It was well, you really both bad. had a sense of humor, huh? <laughs> 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 Maybe that was one of the things that drew you now. So, so going back <laughs> to, to that question. What okay, is, so your question now. Mm-hmm. What does is, what is your first trimester look like? So my first trimester is I... Um, I would love, I love being treated. I just love flowers. I love, you know, I, the girly girl stuff, you know, just being wined and dined, although I don't drink. So seltzered and dined <laughs> and, uh, you know, just really attentive, but that's the thing, you know, with strong women, you're going to be attentive, but you can't be overly attentive because then you seem wimpy and you need me. I don't want you to right. need me. 
I want you to want me. Mm-hmm. So there's a big difference. And, and, and if I love a man that I look up to and say, wow, look at your accomplishments, because that's the one bone of contention that Dr. Pat and I had is in her mind, the only man that I would have a successful relationship is the pretty boy, you know, who caters to me. And, you know, I'm the one that's on the pedestal, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't want that. I do not want that. I want someone who is as powerful, if not more powerful, but I don't want the fighting that comes with it. So until I can find that, that would be my first trimester. Someone who's doing their thing and I can turn the TV on and go, oh my God, look at my man, you know, (laughs) and, and, and be so like enthralled with him. That, that would be my first trimester. And, uh, and just knowing that, but this is the impossibility. You don't know if they're going to have your back in the first trimester. You don't no, know them. No. You right. do not know them. They do not know you. They Absolutely. only know you from what you are showing off. So, so this, it's almost like, that's why. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's why I say, and, and people yell at me all the time. It's all downhill after the first date. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you made a good first impression. <laughs> because it's beautiful, right? right it's right. full of promise. There's no bruises on the fruit. Right. It's, you, you get you, further, it's right. so good, but it's true. It's true for self-included. You're going to see me as I really am. I, I was just thinking about this, this woman that I used to coach, she would get up an hour early to put her face on before her husband gets, she still does it. I'm like, darling, but you know, that's her, that's her thing. That's what makes her happy. So, wow. you know. Wow. It makes yeah. her happy, and I guess it makes her man happy as well. Well, we so. don't even know. He, she's, yeah, we don't know. Right. I, I really <laughs> wanted to, to, you know, I if I were to bet on that, he already knows, you know. Well, yeah. You know, and, so, you know, yeah. And, and, but anyways, we're not going to track yeah. anybody else. So, and going back to your, your first trimester, it makes me think about when I tell people or oh, women yeah. in general that you have to show men how to treat you. Right. Yeah. So they're like, well, why doesn't he do this? And how come he stops doing that? Because you have given him somewhere along the lines, as you said, it goes down from the first date. Yeah. You have given him a, a sign that it's OK to not treat you the way that you deserve or that you want to be treated. Right. So the first time they stop or they do something, if you don't correct it. But as we said, we put on that sunny glasses and it's okay, and yep. I see the flaws, but it's going to get better. This cat is going to one day change into that dog. If we don't do that as women, how can we expect the man to know what we want and what we don't want, right? Mm-hmm. Where, are we, where are we drawing those lines? Yeah, you better not leave it up to us. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you do, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is where, this is why I'm single. Because I, there's a part of that I understand, and the communication part is important. I'm not saying that it's not important. But there is a certain amount of, it's not that I want you to read my mind. (laughs) But I kind of do. But I kind of (laughs) do. But it just feels so unromantic to train somebody. It's just that's the part that I chafe on. If I have to show you, yeah. right? If I have to tell I'm you, to tell you, right? To, mm-hmm. Because and 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 this is how, how women are. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw us under the bus. But see if this sounds familiar. Why don't you? Why is it that you don't? And I wish you would. <laughs> and then they do it. Then they do it. <laughs> and then we go, well, it doesn't count if I have to tell you to do first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, right. Well, I've that's, heard that. That's where it comes into <laughs> showing. You know, that's right. where it comes into showing a man, like, exactly where, as you said, I kind of want you to read my mind. I want you to know. I want I want it to be kind of 
uh, uh, unspoken communication, right? Yeah. Where we don't have to say it, but it's definitely known. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. We've had that conversation, especially on the Christmas yeah. gift, right? <laughs> yeah. I should know what she wants, but I want to get yeah. it exactly what she wants. So just yeah. tell me what and you then, want so I can get it. Right. And then, But then that's not good enough because it's not a surprise because I want a surprise, too. Oh, no, I'm, so, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell them. Yeah. You should know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that you're setting him up. You're, you're, it's I, not a I'm setup. Sorry, you were, no. Yeah, you are, because he wants to make you happy. Yeah, and if it was what you, if you, if you have something in your mind that is something that's going to make you thrilled, you know, I, that's, I think that's the key. I don't have anything in my mind. That's right, thrilled. and she my, says if I pay thing- close enough attention to her. I could figure it out, which is true. If I'm not really that engaged into really watching her, I, I'm just like, okay, I your birthday's coming up. I need to buy you a gift. What you thinking about, right? Yeah, but that's a far extreme for them, what we're talking about. I think both extremes are not healthy. I think the extreme where you 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 don't care enough to know anything is not good. Oh, yeah. But the right. other extreme of you're going to play, you know, 20 questions. And unless I get the right answer, it's not like that, but sometimes we do need to be a little bit more attentive of, to our mate because we, ta- you know, you started taking for granted and you're not even like engaging into, you know, what would you like? You know what I like? Just, just kind of, cause she knows me very well. She knows my likes and dislikes. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times yeah. it's pretty much yeah. spot on. And when I'm getting lazy and not really paying attention, then she just kind of say, hey, you need to pay more attention, which is right. So, and that's yeah. what I do. Pay more. Yeah, I'm so poor, I can't even pay attention. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so so here's here's the answer to that question, whichever one it was, six, eight, eight, eight times ago, <laughs> which is, which is instead of right before you're about to do it, I want this, I want this, I like this, I like that, and blah, 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 blah. instead of that, if one partner just says, darling, I want to please you till your toes curl, show me what you like. That is so much different than the communication that we're supposed to do to tell each other how to make each other happy. That derails the romance. So I believe that communication, when people keep talking about the the, the key to a successful, you know, uh, relationship is communication, communication. I think there's an extreme of that that takes out the magic of the relationship. There's, there's magic that is not absolutely in the X, Y, and Z of that. Exactly. And I think that's exactly what, what, what I'm trying to express is that when, whenever you get, whenever he's, you know, is Christmas or birthday, it's not Mm -hmm. the gift, right? right? It's, it's the thrill of the fact that what is your heart, your love and your desire to show me because I'm happy with that. It's the magic of just receiving. There is no one thing that I want. It's the thing that whatever you bring. And so, you know, I guess we have to realize that not all, and I guess he kind of realized like, realized this. I don't know. You know, not all women or or me, especially, you know, some women want something specific, right? Yeah. I wanted this. or I wanted that. No, mine comes from a sense of the love within is that, what the yeah. magic that we share, whatever gift it right. is, shows me where what, what the love is. And that's how we started. I mean, that's how I was gifting her when we were dating, you know, first trimester, second trimester, third <laughs> trimester, right? Job, so I, I can't, I can't get to the end and be like, here, whatever, right? I got to go back to the same old thing. So I get it. Yeah. 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 But I'm and, and, and I'm just, and I totally get what you're saying. And I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not criticizing you at all. I, I am though. A um, little tough love for a lot of women who really don't understand that the best way to a loving relationship is to shut the fork up <laughs> by constantly <laughs> pointing out, right? What's wrong? You know, you you completely forget all the things. That's a law of attraction uh, tool, you know. You, 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 there's so many good things you could be focusing on the 80% you could be focusing on, but you're focused on what isn't 
in that 20 percent absolutely and absolutely I- relationship that will ruin your relationship and it will ruin the person again you know our let's 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 cut people some slack let's let's focus here am i the match am i am i lovable is my action loving really Mm -hmm. right it's my action you know so sorry no 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 i totally agree i think um some of the things also that we all i always say is that like in the beginning, it shouldn't, as you said before, if it's that difficult in the beginning, then it's not meant to be. Like, right. and, and I tell my kids that I'm yep. like, okay, you shouldn't be struggling. It in the shouldn't. Beginning. Right. You're, you're too, you're, it's too early for there to be problems. If there's problems already, that's an indication that this is not the one, right? <laughs> as you say, you tell your, right. You tell your daughters, if you go here and they don't go here. I mean, I, I think there's just a certain period of time that you should be in before there should be some turmoil. That's yeah. just kind of how yeah. I feel about yeah. it, right? Yeah, and that's that speaks not to the relationship going full circle. That speaks to your relationship with yourself. So if you are good here, then you're not going to you're going to see those things as whoa, Nelly, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're not good here, then you're going to say, well, I'm not lovable enough, or there's something I'm doing okay, that's I see. right. Making them. And that's a signal for you to do some work here. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. So I think also when we look at, in terms of the looking at the 80, right? If, if we're, if we're focusing again with, with that self love, if we're focusing on the 20, mm. where's that 20 coming from? And as you said, it's not a match, but what is making me see more of the 20 than the 80, right? Right. The 20 is there because nobody is perfect. <laughs> right. right. And what, and nobody what? is for everybody got a 20%. You notice how I went from 88% happy individual right, right. to 80% happy. <laughs> you notice how I cut out 8% because it's, you've got two different people. Again, Don Miguel Ruiz everybody is the leading actor in their own show yes. and your expectation that that other person is your supporting actor is wrong. They're, they got their own show. That's right. That's their right. Own show. They're not your supporting actor. You're not their supporting actor. <laughs> That's You're right. Shows. That's you right. know, is it a double hit feature? That's a match. That's, ah, right? that's, that's the, the match. question, right? That's the question, right? That's the question. Yeah. Yeah, that that is that is that's where you know the the uh, you complete me. It's fifty percent plus fifty percent. If you don't have that fifty percent, you're only fifty percent. Heck no! I want to be eighty eight percent. That's more than fifty percent. Then when you got eighty eight percent plus eighty eight percent, dang, you got more than a whole. Right, that's math. Fifty percent is failing, right? If I got fifty percent in school, that's an F. Yeah, so no, why am I why am I coming in with an F in a relationship? Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. A to get you a B, right? A to get you a B on your way to an A. All right. <laughs> all right. A yeah. strong B. Well, that's a B because it's B positive. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, she she has them right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So give us one more before we head out. Give us one right. more. Really, that key as we you know when people say the key in relationships is uh, communication, but give us your key as far as happiness. Either, either in a relationship or within yourself. What is that key? So if I can do this and say at the end of the day, have I done the best that I can with the time that I had and the resources I had? And it's always yes, because you always do the very best you can. If you could do better, you would. But if I can close out my day doing this, then I can close out my day doing this. But I always do this first. I always do this first because compliments and criticism are just the icing on the cake. You bake your own cake, baby. Are you good with your cake? If you're good with your cake, the icing is going to taste good on it. If you don't got a cake, you're going to have a lot of sugar and it ain't going to taste good at all. Right? That's right. You know, root canal, just not good. So that is the key to a great relationship. 
Is your relationship with yourself 88% great? Do you know without them telling you how wonderful, loving, lovable, and loved, and wrapped in a warm blanket of worthiness, do you know how good you are? And if you are saying to me now, and you're looking at me and I'm looking at the camera right now, if you can't say that about yourself, then know that I'm holding that for you. You might want to do a little happy tune-up with me, Dr. Marissa.life. It's so important. This pandemic has afforded us the time and the space to ask that question. I have a new short film that just came out, PPP, Post-Pandemic Possibilities. The number one point of that film is, are you good here? Are you good here? Right. That's how we get to world peace. That's so true. So, Dr. Marissa, you've given mm-hmm. us a lot. Um, so, let us know how the listeners, listeners can get in contact with you. I know you have drmarissa.life is the, is the website. You have multiple yeah. books. So go ahead and, uh, and, and you have a um, radio show as well, which what, yeah. 420 something weeks? 471 consecutive Ooh, weeks. On second. <laughs> oh, the name of that you. show is, thank you for asking. Um, the name of that show is Take My Advice. I'm not using it. <laughs> okay. Get balance with Dr. Marissa, and it and it's uh, been such a joy to have. It's uh, uh, won the 2016 Podcast of the Year Top Ten Health Award, the 2019 Cover Award, and it's syndicated on CNBC, NBC News Radio, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5. So you can get it anywhere, Spotify, blah, 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 all those places. Um, Fridays is my live show at three drive time, prime time, uh, Pacific Standard Time. So just Catch me there, uh, streaming anywhere. My YouTube channel is probably the best place. It's got my red carpet interviews with uh, Halle Berry, John Travolta. So if you subscribe, it's free. But all of my past shows are there. Um, I have a nonprofit that I would love you to support. It's called um, Eight Ways to Happiness. It helps kids, teens, and young adults who have temporarily forgotten their birth rate to happiness with books and programs for them. And right now, if you donate $25, you get a free copy of my children's book called Mommy, What Are Feelings? Recognized by uh, autism uh, community. So every feeling has a taste, touch, sight, and sound. That was drawn by my five and seven, that's scared. That's my cook. <laughs> Um, that that uh, you get a donation, uh, you get that book as a download for your kids, and a ten dollar donation will get you the film, the new PPP that just got released. And then, of course, for you guys, all your listeners, if they get this book, Eight Ways to Happiness, they get their choice of either the film or this book for free. That's just for your listeners. If you go uh, to drmarissa.life in the pop up, put. Um, loving beyond the I do or Jason and Tina, I'll know who you are and I'll send you the promo codes. All right. Wonderful. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, yes. we thank you so much for gracing us t- this morning or today. Yes. Right. <laughs> you know, thank it, you. It has been. One more thing. If you shop on Amazon and you don't have a nonprofit that you designate on smile, Amazon, put a ways to happiness. Every, every thing you purchase, Amazon gives a tiny little bit. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. And I'll put that in the show notes. Um, in, in the, I'll put that in the show notes on the website and on, on the thank YouTube you. as well. So thank you. It, it'll be everywhere. So we'll have all of your Instagram, your website. Oh yeah. Doc balance, doc balance on Instagram. Okay. And I'm even on TikTok. What? Well, you know what? Right. With that personality, I can see that. <laughs> we'll look forward to your TikToks, right? Yes. Go check them out. Well, thanks again so much. And as always, we're We're in in it it to win win it. it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Loving Beyond the I Do podcast. Head over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Legendary Relationship or visit our website at legendaryrelationship.com. Till next time, remember to make every day count.